Hi, my name is Jenna and this is the third Pimp My Bike video. In this video, I'll cover brake lights and the battery pack. For more information, please check out my website, jdubois.com. All right, let's get started by talking about some of the materials you'll need for this part of the project. To trigger the brake LEDs, I used a 20K slide potentiometer, but a 10K pot should be fine. To attach my pot to the brake wire, I used a terminal lug, which I found in the electronics section of Home Depot. We discussed the LED matrix panel in another video. This one's from Adafruit Industries. You'll also need a proto board for the circuit at the back of the bike. To power the circuit, we'll use a 3.7 volt 2600 milliamp hour lithium ion polymer battery. Since the Arduino requires a 5 volt source, we'll use the Minty Boost to step up the voltage. You're also going to need a lithium ion charger for the battery. And as discussed in previous videos, you'll need four wire male and female connectors, as well as jumper wires. Okay. I'll begin by giving a simplified, slightly inaccurate explanation of the braking mechanism. The brake lights for this project use a slide potentiometer that's attached to my brake wire to sense when the brake lever is squeezed. For now, you can think of a potentiometer, or pot, as a component that can act as a variable resistor. In other words, as you move the tab or turn the knob, depending on the type of pot, the resistance changes. By attaching the sliding tab to the bike frame using zip ties and the body of the pot to the bike's brake wire using zip ties and a terminal lug, I was able to link braking to a change in resistance. The harder I squeeze the brake lever, the shorter the brake wire becomes, the farther the pot slides, and the greater the resistance. A change in resistance results in a change in voltage, which we can measure with one of the Arduino's analog input pins. When the voltage reaches a certain threshold, we illuminate the back LEDs. Great! Now we're going to talk about wiring the potentiometer. Pots are three terminal resistors. One leg is wired to 5 volts, the opposite leg is wired to ground, and the remaining terminal is connected to an analog input pin on the Arduino in order to measure changes in voltage as the resistance changes. I soldered three wires of a four-wire connector to the pot. I then threaded the connector through the Tupperware and soldered the ends of the wires to the protoboard. We'll revisit this circuit again in a moment when we talk about the battery. For anyone who's interested in delving a little deeper and getting a more accurate and complete understanding of the circuit discussed in this part of the project, I recommend Googling and familiarizing yourself with the following concepts. Electrical circuit, voltage, current, resistance, Ohm's law, resistors in series and in parallel, voltage divider, and potentiometer. I began writing a processing sketch to illustrate how voltage changes as you adjust the wiper. The wiper is the technical term for the knob or the sliding tab. Moving the wiper up and down changes the voltage read at analog pin zero on the Arduino. I originally planned to flesh out this processing sketch and spend some time explaining voltage dividers, but there are great resources on the web, and I figured no point reinventing the wheel. But if you'd like to check out this processing sketch, it's available on my GitHub profile. Okay, now let's talk about the battery pack. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we have to use a Minty Boost to step up the voltage to 5 volts to power the Arduino. Once again, Adafruit Industries is our friend. They've compiled a great step-by-step -step tutorial for soldering together the Minty Boost. We're going to follow the instructions on their website, but we'll make a single modification. In addition to providing the Arduino with a 5-volt source, we're going to supply 5 volts to the components attached to the proto board by soldering two additional jumper wires to the Minty Boost. These jumpers will be attached to the same holes as the USB connector. As the Minty Boost tutorial points out, you can use a digital multimeter to measure 5 volts across the two outer pins of the USB connector. Hoorah! We're ready to complete the circuit. We connect the battery to the Minty Boost and we solder the two extra jumpers to the protoboard's bus strips in order to provide a 5 volt potential to the LED matrix and slide potentiometer. To power the Arduino and pimp our bikes, we simply plug one end of the USB cord into the Minty Boost. Run the cord down the length of the bike frame and plug the remaining end into the Arduino. Woo! That's all she wrote, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Please feel free to check out my website, jdebois.com, for additional information and projects. Adios!